And everything is good with the connection now. Все нормально со связью сейчас. Но я не знаю, если я уйду на кухню, вдруг пропадет. Почему? Машинка работает, может поэтому техника. Окей, okay, let's try if I will stay online. Let's see. I'm still online. Okay, that's good. That's a good sign. Yeah, I'm I'm here and I can see three viewers already. Hi guys. Um please message me in the chat who you are. I I'd like to know if you are um, watching me for the first time or you participate in my previous classes already uh, because um, my first classes uh, were about Russian alphabet and we learned how to read in Russian and today's class is for students who can read already who know uh, Russian the Russian alphabet so guys if someone didn't watch my um, reading classes yet please do it okay because they are really important also um, every time I post information about homework after those classes all the homework is on my teaching page a link to my Pages in the description. Привет, привет. Uh, guys, and uh, while I'm waiting for other viewers, I'd like to say that uh, starting with this class, I will make PDF lessons after every class. So everything what I teach you during my classes will be on PDF and uh, those PDF lessons will be uploaded on my teaching page. Uh, hello, hello, glad to see you. If you are the, if it's the first time when you are here and you didn't learn the alphabet yet, please uh, watch my my playlist about Ru the Russian alphabet because if you don't know how to read you won't understand uh, anything so also guys I think about creating a whatsapp group for people who participate in my classes and that group will be not just for daily talkings. That group will be for your Russian practice exactly. So everything what I teach you will be practiced there. All the phrases, all the words, all the dialogues, texts. So step by step, when we learn more and more, we will need that group and I will create it. I promise you. And again, like I said before, uh, the link to that group will be posted on my teaching page. If someone doesn't know about my page yet, then uh, every time after my live classes, I post a link to my page in the description below the video. So guys, let's start. Uh, and let's see who will join us later, but now it's better to start. So, today's topic is Russian names. I will... Thank you, I am a beginner now, but can record them and can speak very basically. Okay, that's good. Uh, so, uh, I think this topic isn't written in uh, Russian textbooks because um, it's not a grammar topic. It's a cultural
on topic, I think. Uh, so, I took two lists of the most popular Russian names. Males' names and females' names. And I took... Uh, I made two lists with every group of names. The first group will be names for men. Okay? And uh, like in every language we have full names and short names. Full names are used for formal conversations. And also, when we speak formally, we use, we say a name and a patronym. I think I pronounced it right. Uh, so, uh, it's our dad's name, father's name. I explain this topic in the latest class so guys uh, if you didn't watch it please watch to learn about it okay the first list of the names i think i pronounced wrong patronic patronymic patronymic I, I really forgot that word. So, can you see this list? I think I need to move closer like this. So, this column contains full names for men. So, we say these uh, names when we speak formally. This column contains informal versions of those names. So, look, for example, how patro patronymic, yes, patronymic, so, yes, patronymics, plural. Look, how long the full name is and how short this one and guys i really i looked for some information about our ways of making short names because i'm pretty sure that it's a historical moment for example one of uh, why why a full name is alex Alexander, for example, Alexander, Alexander, it's a very popular name in many countries, Alexander, Alexander, and a short version is just Sasha, Sasha, I try to find why how it came, how we made Sasha from Alexander, and I didn't find it. Uh, but I'm sure that a reason exists, definitely. But sorry, I didn't find it. So, guys, look, uh, when you study Russian, every time you read such a rule that words, with a ya endings can be feminine and masculine. Mostly they are feminine, but it's not about the names. If you hear or if you see a name with a ending, you can't be sure if it's a boy or a girl, a man or a woman, until you see that person. Because, look, Sasha 
can be a name for a boy and for a girl. But the difference is in the full name. So, if I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, of course, I will ask. Mm, you're talking about Sasha. Are you talking about a girl or a boy? But if I can hear a full name, I will understand if it's a boy or a girl. So, Alexander is a name for a boy. Alexandra uh, with A in the end will be a name for a girl. Okay? But uh, for you to understand Russian short names, you need to know the full names, of course. So, the next name. Dmitri, Dmitri, Dmitri. A short version is Dima. My boyfriend names uh, Dima. His name is Dima, and his full name is Dmitri. Uh, the next name, Sergei, Sergei, I know that it sounds a bit inappropriate in uh, Portuguese or in Spanish, something like this, uh, in Portuguese or in Spanish, <laughs> Sergei, uh, and an informal version is Сережа. Сережа. Guys, don't forget that unstressed E represents E sound. So, here I pronounce E every time. Alexander, Sergey, Sereja. A pronunciation rule about unstressed E. Yeah. I told you about that in my previous classes when we learned how to read in Russian. The next name. Alexei, Alexei, again, unstressed year represents E sound. And a short name, an informal version is Lyosha, Lyosha. Uh, you see, I didn't put a stress mark here and here because these words contain a letter Yo. When we see a letter Yo in a word, it's always stressed. Always. So we don't need to put a stress mark. The next full name. Mikhail. Mikhail and a short version Misha Misha The next name Raman Raman O is unstressed here and it represents a sound. So I pronounce this name like Raman. Raman. But when we make a short name, O becomes stressed, and a short version is Roma. Roma. 
the next name. Is 
So, this shirt version. Sasha, Dima, Sereja, Leša, Misha, Roma, Senja. Yeah, Senja. Vanya, Pasha, Zhenya. Guys, I will make a PDF lesson with these names. Also, I will make exercises for your homework. You will need to match a full name and a short name. And um, if you didn't watch this lesson from the beginning, you can always rewatch it later. Uh, any question about these names? Any question? I'm waiting for your questions while I'm putting the next list. No questions? Thank you, Antal. You speak good English in a very relaxed way. Like, <laughs> no questions. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, so, guys, uh, when I read these names, they contained the most common short versions. Okay? But these names are mostly full. So, uh, for example, the first name, Maxim, Maxim, mostly uh, a man with this name is called like this and a little boy with this name is called Maxim too. For example, a man is called Alexander, but a little boy is called Sasha. But in this case, a little boy can be called Maxim too. And uh, of course, like I told you before, we have a lot of versions of this name. For example, Maxim can be Max. Maxik, Maxinka, um, Maxima, Maxima, also Maxima, um, and that's all I think. So, uh, four, at least four versions of this name for a little boy. But, uh, of course, every family calls his boy like they want. Someone will call his boy uh, Maxima, someone will call his boy Maximka or Maxik, but in this case, uh, if a boy is called Alexander, his family will, be, uh, will call him Sasha. Sasha. But in this case, all these versions I told you about are not that common. Um, so, every family chooses uh, the own way of calling his boy, their, their boy. Okay. The next name, without a common short version to Andrei Andrei Again we have a lot of gentle versions Andrejka Andriusha Andriushka Dusha uh, but they 
are not that common. Again, every family chooses their own way of uh, a gentle name. The next uh, name, Artyom. Artyom. Uh, short versions are different. Тёма, Тёмыч, Артёмка, uh, Артёмчик, etc. Again, they are not that common. So, uh, a little boy can be called Artyom too. Mostly Artyom. The next word, Ilya, Ilya. In this case, I can't call, I can't say any gentle version. So Ilya is just Ilya. Ah, no, 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 no. I can Ilusha, Ilushinka. Yes, Ilusha, Ilushinka. Uh, but the for really little boys. So all these names, Maxi, uh, Maxim, Kali, Maxik, uh, Andriusha, Tioma, Ilusha, they are for little boys. Little boys. But these names are for adults too, but for informal conversations. That's the difference. For, uh, I can't call um, an adult like uh, Andrusha. I can't say like that. Only if, uh, only if he's my son. So he will be Andrusha at any age for me. Uh, so I have an uncle. I have an uncle. His name is Andre. Um, and uh, his mom, my uh, grandma, my grandma, is... Uh, um, she calls him Andrusha because he is her son. So even if he's about 40, he's a little boy for her anyway, and she calls him Andrusha, Andrusha. But everybody in our family calls him Andre. Anyway, even speaking informally, Andre. The next word. Kirill. Kirill. Again, uh, there are some gentle versions for little boys. Kiryusha. And that's all. <laughs> Kirill, Kiryusha. I don't know any, any gentle version more <laughs> for this name. Just Kiryusha. You will be surprised, but in Russia, Nikita is a name for boys. I know that in America it's a name for girls, but in Russia it's just for boys. No one girl can be called Nikita, only boys. And um, Again, I can't make gentle versions of this name, just Nikita. I don't know, maybe some families create their own gentle versions of this name, but I can't, because I never heard them. Nikita is just Nikita, that's all. And the last name, Yegor, Yegor. There are some uh, gentle versions for little boys too, like Yegorka. Mm, just one version, Yegorka. Uh, so you see, 
this is a list of names with um, a little small uh, amount with a little amount a little amount of gentle names and uh, short names there are not a lot of short versions for these names uh, guys any question about this list oh While you are thinking about your questions, I am going to put the next list. The names for women. And for girls, of course. For girls and women. So, again, the most popular Russian names for girls. By the way, there aren't, there isn't my name because I told you about my name in the latest class, I think. Let's start. Ah, by the way, guys, I didn't read these names fast. So let me read them. Follow me. Listen to my fast speaking. Maxim, Andrei, Artem, Ilya, Kirill, Nikita, Yegor. That's all. Let's move to the Mm, females names. The first full name is Anastasia. Anastasia. A short version is Nastya. Nastya. By the way, look, here I pronounce s hard, but here I pronounce s soft. I explained you this pronunciation rule before. Here, look, the next consonant is hard. So it, uh, the next consonant always influences s and z sounds. So, since it's hard, s is pronounced hard too. But here, tia, 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 t is soft. And it makes this s soft too. Okay? Nastya. Nastya. The next name. Anna. Anna. Uh, I know that uh, such name exist, exists in other languages uh, and sometimes it's written with one N and it's pronounced like Anna, Anna. But in Russian it's written with double N and we make N sound a bit longer. So, when we pronounce with one N, we say Anna, Anna, but we don't have such a name, so we pronounce it a bit longer, Anna, Anna, Anna. Every time when you see double consonants, you need to pronounce them a bit longer, okay? Every time make a long consonant sound. It's our pronunciation rule. And a short version is Anya. Anya. Here you can see just one N, so 
you pronounce it short. Nya, nya, anya, anya. Anna, long, anya, short. The next word, the next name. Maria, Maria, a really popular name everywhere, I mean around the world. A short version is Masha, Masha. By the way, in my, uh, it's the ending for my name too. Um, my full name is Natalia. My informal name is Natasha. Natasha. That's why uh, my nickname on WhatsApp is Natty Natasha. Because Natalia, uh, one of the short versions is Natty, but it's a foreign version. We don't have such a short name Natty or Natty, a long version or a uh, a long way of pronunciation or a short way of pronunciation, whatever, we don't have such a name. We have just Natasha. But uh, my foreign friends from Brazil called me Nati, and uh, I liked that version, so I made uh, my nickname Nati Natasha, and uh, I really love that singer. Actually, just because she's Natasha too. <laughs> I love all Natashas in the world <laughs> because uh, we have uh, one name, the same name. Uh, let's continue. The next word. Yelena. Yelena. It's my mom's name. Yelena. And an informal way, a short version is Lena. Lena. The next name. Darya. Darya. A soft sign, Mehizna, was in the last, um, in the latest reading class. I explained you that it doesn't have any sound, but it makes the previous consonant soft. And the following letters, ye, yo, yu, ya, are pronounced like in the alphabet. And also, uh, letter e is pronounced with y sound, ye, ye. So, r, soft, r, ya. Ria, Daria, Daria. Don't pronounce it like Daria. No, uh, don't try to pronounce it with E sound. It's another name, and uh, we don't have such a name here in Russia. It's not a Russian name. Maybe, um, maybe it's an European name, but not Russian. Our name is. Darya, Ria, Ria, Ria. Try to pronounce it, uh, this part really short. Don't pronounce it Ria, Ria, no, Ria, 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 Darya. And the short version is Dasha, Dasha. The next name Irina. Irina. And the short version is Ira. Ira. The next name. Yekaterina. Yekaterina. A short version is Katya. Katya. I will put all these names into your homework. Be ready. So you will you will know about Russian names more. The next name. 
Ольга. Ольга. It's my sister name. And the short version is Оля. Оля. The next name. Юлия. Юлия. A short version. Юля. Юля. And the last name. Татьяна. Татьяна. Again, don't try to pronounce it like Татьяна. Not и, not Тати. Тати, but Тат. Тат. Татьяна. Татьяна. Okay? Татьяна. A short version is Таня. Таня. And um, Здравствуйте. Окей, okay. здравствуйте. Uh, I had something in my, in my mind to say, but I forgot. Ah, okay. I recalled about that. Guys, I'm pretty sure that when I pronounce these names, some of them sound really familiar for you because uh, we can... Uh, we can meet people from other countries with similar names. For example, uh, Yulia is Julia, um, Yekaterina is Catherine, um, Yelena is Helen or Elena, it depends on the country, Maria is Mary, Etc. Anastasia, Anastasia. Any question about these names? Again, guys, these short versions are the most common ones. So when um, I meet Anastasia, any Anastasia, I'm pretty sure that her family called her Nastya. But the next list will be with names that don't, which don't have very common short versions. Like, uh, uh, like in the case with um, males' names. So if you have any questions, please write me in the comments below. I'm changing the list. It's going to be the last list for today, and then I will tell you something about our vacative case. So it will be the first case that we learn. Again, um, Ksenia. What is the gentle form for Ksenia? Uh, Ksusha. Ksenia is Ksusha, and it's a pretty common version. Uh, but uh, also you can hear such uh, uh, gentle versions, not common ones, like Ksushinka, Ksenichka, um, Ksushka. Mm, that's all I think. Maybe some more, but I mentioned the most popular. Do you have more questions? Mm, well, then let's continue. Then last list. Alina. Alina. There is no gentle version, no short version, no short version. Not a gentle one, but a short version. Uh, so, an adult is Alina, a little girl is Alina too, but I have um, a classmate, an ex-classmate, of course. Uh, her name is Alina. And when we were children, and even now, 
out. I I called her before and I call her now. Alinyonak. 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 I like this version of her name. Um, I made this version. So I'm not sure that everybody uh, with this name Alina is called Alinyonak. Not everybody, but I made this name because I liked that version. Alinyonak. It was my gentle way of calling my friend. And I still call her like this. Alinyonak. The next name. Arina. Arina. Again, an adult woman is Arina. A little girl is Arina too, but she can be called Arisha. For example, Arisha is a gentle way of uh, calling little a little girl. Diana. Diana. A gentle version can be Dianachka. Dianachka for little girl. Dianachka. Alisa. Alisa. I really don't know a gentle version for his name. I never heard because uh, I knew two, just two girls with this name. It's not that popular here in Russia. But maybe, maybe a little girl can be called Lisiona. Lisionok, maybe, maybe, uh, but I'm not sure, okay, uh, because uh, uh, I heard those girls' moms and they called their daughters Alisa. They didn't make uh, gentle versions for this name. Marina, Marina. Again, I never heard a gentle version for this name. An adult woman is called Marina. A little girl is called Marina too. Jana. Jana. A gentle version can be Janachka. Janachka. It's not a short version, of course, because Jana is a way much shorter than Janachka. But Janachka is a gentle version, not a short one, but a gentle one. And the last one is Alona. Alona. I have a student with this name, Alona, and uh, I never heard a gentle version uh, of this name from her mom. She calls her Alona, but I'm again, I made my own gentle version of his, of this name. I call her Alunchik. Alunchik. Alona Alunchik. But again, it's not that common. It's just my way of calling her like that. Any question about this list? Let me read all the females' names really fast, starting with starting from the first list. So, the full names follow my fast speaking. Anastasia, Anna, Maria, Yelena, Darya. Irina, Ekaterina, Olga, Yulia, Tatiana. Short versions. Nastya, Anya, Masha, Lena, Dasha, Ira, Katya, Olya, Yulia, Tanya. And the last list. 
Ready? Alina, Arina, Diana, Alisa, Marina, Jana, Alena. That's all about Russian names. They are not exactly Russian because some, um, a lot of names uh, were taken from other languages. Um, exactly Russian names um, aren't that popular here, but I don't know why, but nowadays exactly Russian names, not taken from the other languages, but exactly Russian names become popular, uh, such like Fyokola, Aksinya. They don't sound beautiful, uh, beautifully for us. So they uh, lost their popularity but now they become popular. I don't know why, but we kind of get back to our roots with these names. Well, and like I told you, I'm gonna talk about evocative case. Let me explain you what kind of case it is. Uh, this vocative case doesn't work for full names. So, um, vocative case is used when we call someone and uh, we start a phrase with his or her name. For example, uh, my boyfriend says to me, uh, Natalia, could you give me blah 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 something? Of course, if he uses my full name, uh, he won't use the vacative case. He will say my name Natalia. Natalia, blah 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 blah. Could, Natalia, could you give me something? But if he says my uh, informal name, that ends with a, he can pronounce it uh, fully, Natasha. Natasha, could you give me something? But also he can reduce the ending and a disappears. And he can say Natash, Natash. This is the vacative case. It's used for informal ways, for informal names, sorry, for informal names, and we reduce the last vowel, a or ya. It works for men and for women. For example, let me make all these uh, shirt names let me turn them to the vacative case. So if I call Nastya, for example, Nastya, could you give me something? I can say it fully, Nastya. Nastya, could you give me something? But I can reduce the last letter and say Nastya. The last consonant is soft anyway because it's soft here. But I don't say Tya, I say T. Nast, Nast, could you give me something? I nip, nip, nip again. I reduce ya, but nip stays soft anyway. I, could you give me something? Marsh, Marsh, could you give me something? Liam, could you give me something? Dash, could you give me something? Ir, Ir, come here. Kat, could you help me? Ol, I need you in the kitchen. Yul, could you open the door, please? Tan, 
Could you open the window, please? Sash, could you help me? Dim, help me, please. <sighs> Sirios, could you give me my phone, please? Lyosh, could you come here? Mish, could you give me something? Uh, what else can I can ask? Okay, I won't continue, okay? Because I can't create <laughs> any, uh, any request more. But I hope you understood the way of this speaking when we reduce the last vowels and in which situations we use it okay uh, or for example uh, the next uh, lesson will be about meeting people introducing each other so uh, when i introduce my friends to each other uh, i can say I can say fully, I can say Dima, Dima, meet my sister, for example, or I can say Dim, meet my sister, her name's Ola, Ol, Ol, meet my boyfriend, his name's Dima. We'll, we will talk about it in our next class. By the way, guys, since I'm on my vacation, and the last, the next week, the next week is the last week of my vacation. Then I will make a live class, not in two weeks, but I will make the, last, the next class next Sunday. So in a week, like before. Okay, so at the same time, like, to, uh, like tonight, now it's um 9 11 9 p.m we started at my 8 p.m when it was 8 p.m here so please look at your time and join me the same time next sunday okay don't forget that you will need a pen a notebook and the russian language settings because Sometimes, yes, I will give you um, exercises for writing something in the chat. Also, guys, your homework will be ready, I think, on Friday, maybe. Uh, because even if I'm on my vacation, I still work. I still have classes, but I have less classes than usually. Usually I work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. That's why I don't have enough time for making homework for you. Uh, but now I work less and I hope to, I hope I will prepare homework for you faster. Also, I will prepare a PDF lesson for you. Everything will be uploaded on my uh, teaching page. Also, guys, I remind you that I'm going to make a WhatsApp group uh, exactly for students who participate in my live classes because we will practice everything what I give you in that group. So I will teach you live on YouTube and we will practice all the new words and new phrases in that group. The link to the group will be on my teaching page too. Uh, guys, I hope you liked this lesson. I would like to see your comments about it. So if you're watching me right now, please write your comments in the chat. If you watch me later and offline, you're welcome to write your comments um, below the video. Don't forget to look in the description below the video because there are useful links for you. See you next Sunday. I hope to see more viewers 
than today. Um, well, thank you for watching me. Bye-bye.